Hey, what is up guys? Mike Thomas, aka The Young Trishula here. Today we're going to be going over the deck list for the Shocklock Drytron deck that I showed off about a month ago here on the channel. I know this video has been a long time coming, so let's not waste any time and let's get right into the deck list. So, to start things off, we have three copies of Drytron Fafnir, uh, three copies of Drytron Nova, and three copies of Cyber Emergency. We are maxing out on consistency cards so because we always want to see uh, Drytron Zeta and or Drytron Alpha in our opening hand. Uh, the combo that I showed off in the previous video was a three card combo, even though there are some two card combos in the deck that I will be uh, showing at the end of this deck profile. Um, we really would like to see both of these cards in our opening hand, so we are going to max out on the consistency. Building off of that, we are also going to play two copies of Gamma Eltanian. Uh, we are not playing three like you might see in some OCG deck lists because we do not have three Ben 10, so it is less useful for us to have a lot of Drytron names. We have to make up for not having three Ben 10 by playing other packages, um, and so it's just not as useful in Gamma. You have to see Gamma with another Drytron in order for it to be really good. But because Gamma is so strong, um, we would prefer to play more than one copy, but three is a bit excessive. In the last slot, we are going to play the uh, Drytron Delta because Drytron Delta has always kind of been the one Drytron that you play when you've kind of when you've already had access to Alpha and Zeta and you just want to get just a little bit of extra advantage going um, and just have an extra name it can help push you a little bit further than the standard route normally can. So to couple with all of our Drytrons, we are obviously going to play the one copy of Ben 10 that we are allowed to play, as well as three copies of Diviner of the Herald and three copies of Preparation of Rites. This is so that we have the maximum number of Ben 10s available to us, as well as the maximum number of Vendred Battle Lord. And Vendred Battle Lord is very cool because Vendred Battle Lord allows us to protect ourselves from hand traps and search another ritual monster like the Ben 10, the Megaliths, or the Magician of Black Chaos Max. And because so many of these cards are flexible and interchangeable, it is really good that we can max out on all of these cards so that we can see combinations of them. For example, we could see Diviner plus Alpha Zeta, that would get us to the full combo. We could see Ben 10 plus Alpha Zeta, that I believe is also the full combo. Um, Battle Lord plus Zeta locks your opponent out of being able to make hand traps at any point. So having all of these cards at their maximum is absolutely fantastic for us. Um, however, we do not want to play the maximum number of the ritual spells because the ritual spells themselves are specific. We only want to see these cards when we know which of the ritual monsters that we have. We are also going to be playing uh, the Megalith engine of one full one Bethor, one Ophiel. This is a pretty standard Megalith package. You don't need to play multiples of either Bethor or full because if you have uh, the one full, you have the entire package and you don't need to play two Bethor because full can summon out of your hand. So if you are attempting to summon the Bethor, you can either do one of two things. You can use Ophiel to search Ock and then just tribute the Ophiel and Ock to summon the Bethor from your deck. Or you can go down a route where you add the Bethor to your hand with Ophiel and you can just tribute other cards in order to summon the Bethor. But I think adding the Ock and tributing Ophiel and Ock is probably what you are going to want to do if you were summoning Bethor, but in our combo, we are not normally going for Bethor. Normally, we are adding back the Ben 10. We are grabbing Ophiel, and Ophiel is grabbing Ock, and then Ock is going to summon the Magician of Black Chaos Max, and we are going to set an Imperial Order sent off of Beatrice by overlaying the Full and the Diviner of Heralds. So, the second Bethor is really not something that is necessary, it's really just there as an option for you. It also allows you to Ritual Summon if you uh, happen to draw it and you do not have access to your Meteonis or your Revenge Red Evolution, for example. Uh, rounding out the decklist, we also have the Herald of Orange Lights and the Ava. These are pretty good because the deck is pretty tight as it is. So we don't have a lot of room for hand traps, so these kind of fill that gap 
as well as giving us something to search off of the Cyber Angel Benten, and the fact that they are level 2 synergizes with the Ock, allowing us to tribute the Ock plus to the two monsters that we search off of Ava in order to summon Magician of Black Chaos Max if we don't have other cards that we would like to tribute. I should also note that Bethor is also an 8 star which can be tributed um, alongside Ock to make the Magician of Black Chaos Max very easily so that you could preserve these in your hands if that situation comes up. The Imperial Order is obviously just there as part of the combo, and while you might kind of correctly interpret that it can affect your ability to, you know, play your own strategy after activating it on your opponent, uh, because it would prevent you from activating cards like Meteonus Drytron or Nova or anything like that. Um, one thing to remember is that the Drytrons are able to summon themselves out of the graveyard, and once you are able to, like, once you've locked your opponent under, um, the Magician of Black Chaos Max plus Imperial Order, they're not playing that turn at all unless they're able to just set a bunch of trap cards. So on the following turn, it is very easy to just OTK them. You already have 1900 and 2500 for 44 points of damage just, just starting your turn. So all you would need to do is just summon one Drytron monster, bring back Gamma Eltanian, and summon back one of your Drytrons and just link climb very slightly into Access Code Talker. And that is already lethal present on the field. So going from there, we are going to look at the extra deck. We have two copies of Herald of the Arc Light. Um, this is just so that uh, the Diviner of Herald offers us a follow-up. I see some people playing uh, an Entis instead of the second copy of Herald of the Arclight. I don't think this is correct because of the level modulating effect of Diviner of the Heralds allows us to make Black Rose Dragon, which is essentially just a better version of what Entis would be accomplishing. Um, I see the value in playing Intis being that Diviner of the Herald is just a normal summon that can then destroy anything on the field. However, that is not necessarily always going to be something that you're going to want to do because doing that gives up a very valuable search and, you know, not having that ritual monster might mean that you're not able to play the game. If you find yourself wanting it, you can always try it out, but when you have cards like Zeus, you have cards like Phoenix, you have cards like Black Rose Dragon, you have cards like Access Code Talker, you have so many ways of dealing with your opponent's cards and setup that I think it is much better to just get the consistency pieces. Continuing on from there, we have Beatrice and Mu Beta Fafnir, both being Lavaval Chains for our deck. They are integral to the strategy. Mu Beta Fafnir is one of the new cards from Lightning Overdrive, and it's really strong and it enables so many cool combos. This card is absolutely fantastic. Be sure to pick this card up when Lightning Overdrive releases. Rounding out the Xyz lineup, we have the Lear Lusk Assemble Nightingale and Divine Arsenal AA Zeus. Uh, these two together are very strong, specifically because um, just summoning Gamma Eltanian is a way to threaten your opponent's entire board the same way as normal summoning Diviner of the Heralds and summoning any Drytron is with Black Rose Dragon. Um, the cool thing about Zeus though is that it is a machine monster, so after you clear your opponent's field, you can then tribute it with Meteonus Drytron to then reborn any of your ritual monsters, potentially even your Magician of Black Chaos Max, locking them out of the game. So very strong card, definitely play this. Uh, we then have Linkaribo and Relinquished Anima. They used to be played together to make Union Carrier, but we no longer have it. Now we use it to make Curious Lightsworn Dominion uh, when you have access to your Vendred Battlelord. That is kind of your bread and butter combo. You can do that off of just Alpha Zeta um, and is really what you should be aiming for and trying to accomplish with this deck. It really gives this deck the push it needs in order to play. Um, and then from there, the only other combo piece that we have in the extra deck is the Nightmare Griffin. This allows us to set the Imperial Order that we send off of Beatrice or off of the Curious um, and protects our Magician of Black Chaos Max from cards like Dark Ruler, cards like uh, Forbidden Droplet. It more or less ensures the other half of the Shock Lock combo where we are locking them out of both monsters and spells, meaning that the only cards that they can play are trap cards, but they can't activate those on 
uh, the turn that we give them. So we have basically said that our opponent just cannot play their turn. Then we get another turn where we have all of our dry trident effects live again. We have another or diviner of the heralds in our hand. We are able to just have so much advantage that they are never going to be able to play the game. Um, and then for the rest of the extra deck, we just have cards for closing out the games or dealing with board states like Phoenix, Unicorn, and Boral Sword and Axis Code Talker. Uh, the Phoenix and Unicorn Axis Code Talker package works really well in Drytron because say you start with a Drytron Nova, you can go into your Link Karibo, you can then summon two more Drytrons or even normal summon Diviner plus summon another Drytron and you will be just able to link off into Phoenix immediately, discard a card, pop a card, draw a card, then go into Unicorn, spin another card, you're forcing out negations, and at that point, their board's already partially picked apart, and then you can go up into Access Code Talker, destroy whatever is left, you'll have two attributes in Graveyard already to pop, so that is four spot removals off of just this small little package, and then 5300 to the face so it's not too hard to find lethal from there um i believe that is actually exact lethal when you have vendrin battle lord um alongside your access code talker um but in case you cannot make that lethal you have boral sword dragon to close out the game um and yeah that's that's just the basic run through of the extra deck if you find that you're missing something or you need something um else this extra deck isn't really working for you you can always change it up slightly i think you can definitely cut the boral sword dragon um and replace that with like an ip mascarina if you think that you um are coming up short of the combo a lot um or you could do something like playing downward magician for the zeus package or you could try out the entis by cutting one of the heralds of the arc light uh, as for the side deck, we do not know what the Lightning Overdrive meta is going to look like yet because it is still in the future and we are due for a ban list sometime around the time that Lightning Overdrive comes out within like a month or two after its release, I think. So I've just kind of put together a very generic looking side deck that has cards that you might want to play. Um, being like Drawn Lockbird, one of the strongest hand traps in the game, Nibiru, another one of the strongest hand traps. Uh, Twin Twisters is very good, especially right now with so many chainable cards. I don't think you would want to play something like Lightning Storm in this deck list necessarily, simply because Shadal Schism is a really, really hard card for the uh, Drytron deck list to deal with. So you want back row removal that is chainable so that you can deal with cards like Shadal Schism. Um, but in case you find yourself staring down a window or a particularly oppressive board, you also have cards like Forbidden Droplet and Dark Ruler No More to turn off your opponent's setup field, and then you can very easily deal with it with cards like Zeus, Black Rose, or Access Code Talker. So those are some of the ideas that you could potentially work with uh, with the side deck, but really the side deck is just there as an example. We won't know cards that are good to side until we see what the format looks like. So that is all for the deck profile. Let me know if you like this deck list. Let me know if you enjoyed this deck profile. We are going to go on to the combos now and I will be with you again in a moment. We'll start our combo by sending Zeta from our hand to special alpha and add Battle Lord to our hand. We'll then tribute Battle Lord for Zeta and add Evolution. We'll activate Evolution sending Battle Lord to Special Summon Battle Lord, and use Battle Lord to banish the Battle Lord and call Monster. We will then link into Karibo and Anima, and then turn all three of our monsters into Curious. We will use Battle Lord to add Benten, and then we will use Curious to send Gamma from our deck to the graveyard. We'll then use Gamma to Reborn, tributing Benten and Summon Diviner of the Heralds. We'll then make Mu Beta Fafnir, and use this effect to send Meteonis. Meteonis will return to our hand, and will normal summon the Diviner of the Heralds, sending Herald to add full. We'll then activate Medionis to special summon full by detaching off Fafnir and add back Benten. We'll use full to tribute Benten and summon Ophiel. Ophiel will add Bethor, and Benten will add Ava. We'll then overlay for Beatrice, and Beatrice will send Imperial Order. We'll then link for Nightmare Phoenix, 
and then we will link for Griffin. We will use Griffin to send Ava, set Imperial Order, draw a card, and we will search Herald of the Orange Light and Diviner of the Heralds from our deck. Because this was a two card combo, we still have three cards in hand. The next combo will be with Nova and Benten. We'll start by activating Nova and summon Alpha, and we'll link it off into Link Rebo. We'll then tribute the Benten for Alpha in our graveyard, and add Battlelord. Benten will trigger adding Diviner of the Heralds from our deck. We'll summon the Diviner and send the Herald of the Arclight to get the Revenge at Evolution, and again, we will send Battlelord to summon Battlelord. We'll banish Battlelord so we're protected, and we'll make Curious again. Curious and Battlelord will both trigger, we'll get our full, and we'll send Gamma. We will tribute the full, and reborn the Gamma and the Alpha, and then summon Fafnir. Again, we will send Medionis and add it back to our hand. We will activate it to special summon back the full, and full will grab Benten. Benten will be tributed from our hand by full's effect, and we will special summon Ophiel. Ophiel will grab us Bethor, and Benten will again grab Ava. We'll then overlay Fort Beatrice, and we'll detach and send Imperial Order. We'll link for Phoenix, and then we'll link for Griffin. We'll then send the Ava, set the Imperial Order, draw a card, and then again search Herald and Diviner. Because this was also a two-card combo, we'll draw three cards. Do note that in these combos, you can also search Ak if you have the ability to summon the Magician of Black Chaos Max. That's about all I had for you guys today, so if you enjoyed this video, remember to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully you'll join me in the next video.